Everybody wants to be taught by Mr. Miyagi. You know why? He knows the person. He knows what he wanted out of it. They have a special bond. They have a special relationship. But is that just in the intro process? I'm not questioning anybody, but if you're going to have someone come in and sign up for group classes and give them a one-on-one, -on -one, what's their expectation after loving that one-on-one -on -one that they're going to get a one-on-one -on -one again? Just a question. It's OK depending on the intent and purpose of it. If your intent is to say, listen, I have a five-year-old boy, and I've got to give them a private one-on-one -on -one before they join, because I want to see if they can go into my general population, that's different. If your intent is to say, listen, I'm going to show them some basic skills, and this, and that, and this, and that, and this, and that, great, you should join. I see your skill, this and that, great. Go in the back of the room. There's 22 people there already. Or you could just set a standard of, we have an uh, instructor to student ratio, then that's cool, too. I'm not asking for hands, but do you? Do you have an actual instructor to student ratio that the day that you hit over that number of people, maybe you need a second instructor or assistant mandatory to be there or create a second class? Or is it just throw another guy in the back of the room? I don't want an answer. This is for you guys. This is just stuff that I see. So we all want to have Mr. Miyagi. The thing is, we can't have a school of one. We have to develop some, something in between. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. So is your messaging during the trial now? Now they say they, they saw your ad, they saw your messaging out there, they called you, they were able to book, they showed up. You're either doing a one-on-one. -on -one. Is the person who did that private the guy who's going to teach him later? That's a whole other issue. So they love the intro instructor, but is that intro instructor ever going to show up in their class ever again? Um, do they get several group classes with an orientation? So that's a whole other thing. Are they given an assistant to work with during the trial? so that they could at least report it to the head instructor if the head instructor's not involved. Hey, this particular person's ready to go. Well, what does that mean? He's ready to sign up. He's excited. Well, what about the bullying part? Well, what about you know all those other things that you could write out? And the bullying doesn't have to be a five-year-old. It could be a female who came in, and they came in from college, and the assumption is, hey, I want to take kickboxing. Was the kickboxing class for fitness? Yeah, it must be, because they asked for kickboxing. Did you dig? Did you peel any layers of that onion just to figure out? Because that could be really good, right? Everyone's excited their first time. Their first time. And then all of a sudden, we've got to work on all these other reasons to be able to keep them just figure out what they want first. It's, it's going to cut a lot of hours uh, from, your, from your man hours, OK? Messaging, what is your messaging when they join? Why program when they're joining time versus program? I'm going to get to that in a second. By the way, when uh, show of hands this time, how many people have a beginner's program? How many people have a one-year program? What's the difference? So your beginner's program is shorter than your one-year program. Okay. What, what, how, how long is it? D is it dependent on a rank that they get? It's, so it's still a time program then? OK. So time versus program, I'm going to get to that in a second. Other than prices, are you clear about mandatory uniforms and equipment needed? So for example, I'm not, I'm not here for pro shop sales, right? Anybody ever like give away a free uniform because somebody came in or whatever? This is the thing that always boggled me. If somebody came in for unlimited classes and they only bought one uniform, how many classes are they supposed to take with one uniform? You guys understand what I'm saying? There's a point that we have to understand that when they come in, that responsibility of hygiene and all that other stuff, I don't get that. If you don't dictate as the person who's knowledgeable in your school, as to what you want in the school. How do you get mad at them for hygiene but sell them one uniform knowing they come five days a week? Didn't you just set them up that way? So again, I'm just talking. I'm not asking for anything. I'm just saying when you go back, think about that because you may restructure what your intro program comes with or what you want to limit them to. That's all I'm saying. Tools to succeed. Uh, all right, tools to succeed. Attendance, class planners, dates of testing ahead of time. A student handbook. Simple. When they join. I uh, loved it. I saw my staff member um, uh, looking at your, when they first come in, all the things that they have to do, the places that they should click on to when they first join with the prices, right? QR code and things like that. That would be great that they have that student handbook on day one that there's supposed to be a test, and if they do test, is there a cost for it? And when there's a cost for it, what's net? At least they know that when they sign up. Not that, oh, well, you know, you've been here for four months. You didn't know that? Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't check the website link? That was some, where is it? Oh, I don't, you, you got to look. You guys understand that? From day one, they understand what's ahead of them. Is it just $100 a month, or is there going to be more cost involved in there? 
that's a that's a hidden cost because some people are spending their last dollar just to take the martial arts class and they really don't know oh wait i have to spend i, I talked to a lot of muay thai schools and they're like oh and you, you got to buy uh, your own tie pads you got to buy your own shin guards you got to buy how much is that is that person ready just to you know for whatever reason that they can are they ready for that and my guys that are a part of crew, I just read, why are you making them spend that money? They, they don't even know if they really like it yet, right? They're under what I consider a prep program. They're not even in the martial arts program. They're in a prep program to get them ready to accept real learning. They're learning how to be a student because especially if they're an adult, it's been a long time since they've been a student. Can they? How many of you would like to go back to college right now? It's tough. So we have to be sympathetic to the person coming through there that if people don't like to be told what to do, we have to ease them into the idea that we are going to be their coach. And then we have to understand that we are their coach, right? Some of the, oh, they, they just gotta listen to everything I say. But when was the last time you connected with your instructor, and you guys understand that? So I'll always go back, hey, I'm always a student. Well, who's your instructor, man? You're all my students right now. Based upon how you react, you nod your head or you don't, I'm trying to get input in here and figure out if I hit something Maybe I'll stick on that subject longer. If you guys stare at me and don't do anything, maybe I'm gonna click. So there's a protocol here, save all your questions till the end. Guys, raise your hand, shout out, I don't care. If there's a hot topic that I might talk about. Sir, I don't really agree with you, great, let's talk about it. So I'm just gonna feed that into, the, in, in, into this slideshow, okay? Now, what's your messaging during the, the basic membership? Are you reminding them about their goals? Are they clear on the status? I'm, sh I'm sorry if it's small. Uh, are they clear on the status of them to pass their curriculum requirements? We have class planners. The class planner means, and, and bear with me like this, I've seen schedules, and they'll say all belts, all belts, all belts, all belts. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You normally come in on Monday and Wednesday. You missed Wednesday. He calls me and he goes, I missed Wednesday, what should I do? Well, we have class every day, make it up. Did you? I'm, just, I'm, I'm gonna point this out. So you come on Saturday, pick a topic. Kata. I'm sorry? Kata. Okay, he did kata on Saturday. How does he know what he missed on Wednesday though? So how, did, how is it a makeup? So don't even use the word. Because now you have an over, you might have done kata 20 times in your rotation, but you missed the kicking requirements because you didn't know when it was. Because on the schedule, we didn't tell you when to do it. You guys understand what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about curriculum. Because I don't know what you guys do, but when I was growing up, they were like, you got you're gonna take your test. What's on the test? Be ready for anything. <laughs> Raise your hand, yeah? Anything. Just to mess you up. That was the goal, was to just mess you up, as opposed to, you know what, I just need you to do this, can you just do that? Because in my, in, in my school, it's all about, you gotta be coachable. For you to be in my class, you gotta, because if you're not coachable, what's the point, right? If I say, put this over there, and you don't, what's the point of keeping you for three years if you, you're not gonna do it, and you're gonna come in for information that wasn't relevant for you progressing? So our goal in curriculum, and the things that I try and impress upon with the guys that work with me and crew and everybody else is, what are your expectations and do your students know it? And if they miss the mark on that expectation, they didn't come to class, it's remarkable. I love, I love how a uh, professor was using the word. It's remarkable that all you had to do was show up to your two days a week. I don't care if somebody comes unlimited, but can you come two days a week, please, for like a year and don't miss? Can you do that? There's instructors that I know that have a program that is so strict, if you don't do it, they kick you out. They literally, oh, you couldn't do it? Two days a week, that's all I asked you for. And for some programs, it's a kid's program, and it's only 45 minutes. You couldn't come 45 minutes twice a week? Maybe that's not the program for you. You guys understand that? What's that like? School. Like, school. Regular, public school. If you don't show up on the days that they tell you, they kick you out. It's not come when you feel like it, we have classes every day. Who are they to dictate when they should come in? If you have a curriculum that's supposed to be dictated on a, ro a rotation that you're gonna get an even number of techniques so that you can be able to have a certain amount of retention of that information and perform it when we ask you to do it. And I'm gonna go into what that means. 
So are you creating awareness that your program is basic because a lot of people just throw too much stuff in the very beginning, right? And, confu and it makes it feel like, hey, listen, if I don't know what martial arts is about and they're hitting me with all this stuff now, high belt, it must be even more stuff, right? And realistically, it's a reverse funnel. Usually you have all this stuff in the beginning and it kind of gets a little bit less sometimes under cer certain people's schools. I'm not saying everybody, but I've seen that to be the case. What methods agree you're using to communicate? Are you using social media? So all of these things, if you're saying, hey, listen, I couldn't print, you know, if you don't have the um, student handbook with you, by what method are you communicating for them to be able to obtain a student or a current student handbook? Or the schedule, because we don't have the schedule online, right? How do you you'll keep coming in? Is there just a single portal in which this student can engage? Not the membership one, not the, uh, the lead generating website, a student website in which everybody who appears there is understood to find testing forms, class plan, because the whole thing is we're also trying to be a little bit more green, right? Everybody comes in, they lose a schedule, we print another one, cost us paper, cost us ink. You might as well post it somewhere where they could always be able to see it, but it's just for them. Does that make sense? Okay. In case you don't know, that's a clock. <laughs> and this is a brain surgery book, okay? So when we start with time-based, like uh, join for a one-week program, a six-week program, a one-year membership, if you have a one-year membership, why is it a one-year membership? <coughs> okay, that's, uh, that's an honest <laughs> thing. I, I, I don't because a gym does it, because I did a one-year membership. You gotta understand, are they joining for time or are they trying to complete a program that you created as head instructor owner of your school? Okay. Traditionally, when we do a one year, whether they ask it or not, they're thinking, what am I supposed to get at the end of one year? Because that may determine if they upgrade and continue. It's uh, measurable results, and we can get appreciated by um, John Malik is, uh, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So what's the measurement that we're going by as far as standard? Uh, and I do, I'm, I'm very into performance based. It's not one of those things where I say, hey, you know, every four months everybody automatically get, no, I'm not saying that. They still gotta do their stuff. They still gotta be able to show up to class and perform to a certain standard. But what if they could do it earlier? If you could finish college and it's been done, I'm sorry, let's say high school, in three years, do they still make you go for the last year? Because they say, I need you to do this. And upon finishing this, go to college or at least the eligibility to go to college. And there's plenty of people who can finish college earlier, there's plenty, th but the whole point is, and I'm gonna go into another slide is, how long do you join college for? I'll go into that in a second. Measurable results and after one year they join for the same thing because here's a word that I want you to be very careful of. Do you re how many people say that, uh, uh, how many renewals you got? How many people have an actual stat that says, oh, I renewed this guy? What does renew mean? That's not my definition of renew. Doing it again. I'm gonna upgrade to, who, okay, I have an iPad. I'm gonna upgrade to an iPad too. As opposed to, I have an iPad. It's still another iPad. One is, there's something totally different, right, in the features of what you're get, getting within the program. But if I have the original iPad, or a phone, and I'm getting the same old phone, I'm renewing what I had last year, right? You could renew a cell phone contract and not get any more minutes while I renewed the same contract, but I can upgrade my plan to include more minutes, to have more data, you guys, you, you guys follow me? See, that's how we think, that's not how they think. They think, I got the same phone. Or I wanna upgrade, depending how you look at it, how many people want the old iPad and how many people want the new iPad? You guys understand it? Our job, even if it's just by your presentation and wording is, I want your upgrade because I don't want the old prep beginner program anymore. Or am I gonna renew for the same thing for another year? I just have a different belt. You guys understand where I'm going with this? So I don't wanna over speak about it, but even by the terminology, not how we think. We're the crazy ones. I will always refer, we're the weird crazy ones. You want them to believe that upgrade is good because they already think upgrade is good. When there's an iPad 3, whoever had the iPad 2 will get the iPad 3. 
because they don't want the old one anymore. They want the new one. It has nothing to do with my belief in their psychology. It's a belief in what are you offering in that new one. You guys understand that? Because the iPad is black does not make it the new iPad. It's because it's thinner, because it has more features, because it has X amount of built-in applications and operating system that makes it an upgrade. We have to start thinking, well, what is the upgrade in my program as opposed to what I used to offer when they were in the prep program? The second you can convey that, who's not excited about it? You guys get that? Because they were willing to join your school for a year for the old stuff. Why wouldn't they want to join for even more new stuff? Because they already understand the value. 